Welcome, Sue. Peace to the streets. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. What's going on? Uh, everything is everything. So um, we're going to just jump right into it. One, management. What? Oh, do you want me looking at the camera or looking at you? Oh, you look like however. Like, All right, cool. We can yeah. Go. Yeah, keep it rolling. Okay. <laughs> It actually didn't start with management. It actually started in radio. Um, oh, wow. I was hosting a radio show with WKBY out of Chatham, Virginia. And um, some of the artists that I was interviewing, you know, would come on the show. Some of the local talent, community leaders and stuff would come on the show. Mm -hmm. And then one of the artists, their managers, introduced me to Stephanie Cadigan, which is the CEO of Limelight Records and Limelight Artist Management. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought that was your uh, platform. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm the um, COO of the company. COO. Okay. And so she brought me in to do media preparation for the artist. So I would do their interviews, um, prep them on interview etiquettes and different things of that nature. And so it just kind of like spiraled into a whole nother stage of events as okay. far as her mentoring me and things of that nature. And then it just, it took off. You know, we got into the branding phase. Um, we got into artist development, marketing. You know, I learned all these things up under her tutelage. And it just put me in the position that I'm in now. And, you know, so it, you know, ultimately led me to managing a couple of artists, but also focusing um, on brand and marketing aspects of their career as well. Okay. Um, now, do you do consultation? Yes, we do do consultations. Okay, and how much are you guys running for our consultations? Fifty dollars an hour. Okay, fifty an hour. Okay, that's good. Um, now, what what artist was your biggest breakthrough? Mine personally. Ah, uh, yes. Um, King James out of Danville, Virginia. Okay. Um, I started working on his brand, and you know, really helping develop his image um, mm -hmm. for a single that was released last year, which was Real Ones. And, you know, I've worked with him from the ground up. So, like, that was my first hands-on project as far as working with an artist and seeing the yays and the nays and the do's and the don'ts of building a brand up, developing a market for that brand, mm -hmm. and pushing that artist through um, that channel, you know, for them to get to that next level. And ultimately, you know, it got him from the marketing aspect, the campaigns, from promotions and radio spins and stuff like that, it ultimately got him a plaque. You know for his single so you know that was a great accomplishment not just for myself but as the team as a whole okay now have you ever dealt with an artist that you just simply can't work with like you had to literally be like i can't do this anymore with you yes <laughs> okay <laughs> yes i have <laughs> okay now as a now they always say you know uh, when you're a manager, you know, stick stones can't break my bones or whatever. What is your biggest no-no? Like, you know what? Fuck the money. Like, I have principles and standards. Like, what is your pet peeve on that? Well, when it comes to their music or what, just the person? Just the person in general. Not willing to listen. Okay. Um, Getting them off their soapbox thinking that they know everything. Okay. You know, if it gets to the point where I can't inform you on what I do as a for a living, mm -hmm. you know, if that was the case, we wouldn't be working together. Mm -hmm. So if you knew everything that I knew or everything that, you know, my business partners know, if you knew that information, mm -hmm. you wouldn't need us in the first place. So, you know, individuals coming into it thinking that they know everything about the industry and not willing to learn, like that's the biggest pet peeve. And that's not just for me, that's for really anybody in the industry. Now, for anyone that did, like, leave from you, like, hey, you know, you're not willing to listen. I can't do this anymore. How far did they get with their music career? It was a downward spiral. Okay. <laughs> that <laughs> it was, sums it up. It was a downward spiral. Downward but spiral. because the thing about it is, you know, they have to learn for themselves. And it takes time. It's, this is not an overnight success type of business. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. It's mm -hmm. channels. It's steps mm -hmm. that you have to take. You know, you don't go into a business you know, sweeping floors one day and expect to be the president of the company the next. next. It doesn't work like mm -hmm. that. Okay. All right. Um. She had to take a step off. So, y'all keep it hot. I'm going to keep y'all entertained.
you know, because we're rocking with Key to the Streets, you know, so just a little intermission, a little break. Don't worry about it. She's back now, so we're back to it. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to keep it raw like that. Um, single mother, you guys, multitasking. Um, next. Now, what, when it comes down to management, do managers really put their time and money into an artist's investment? Yes and no. Okay. Um, because it's two sides of it. You know, um, actually, it's funny you said it because we have an event today in Atlanta called the Investment Table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where artists are coming in, they're showcasing their talent, they're networking. And if, you know, if Stephanie feels like, hey, look, that artist right there, he or she is the next thing, mm -hmm. they're going to back that artist. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be financially, whether it be you know, studio time, branding, marketing, different things like that, they're going to invest into that. But like I tell a lot of artists, you know, it is key that you have a budget coming into the music industry. What are you willing to invest in yourself music wise? Because it's a lot of key components that's necessary. Um, you don't want to trap an artist into a contract and then you're taking their money or you're getting the bulk of this. No, we want the artist to stay independent and we're going to show you and give you each step to help you stay independent. We don't want to lock you into those type of contracts. Okay. Um. She'll be back. Studio time. Do you feel like the artists need to make more of their investment towards that, or is it more of an image? Because I know I ask artists that question they a lot. They invest in their brand. Because this is the thing about it. If your brand is not together, your mm -hmm. sound is not together, what are you going to market and what are you going to manage? Okay. You see what I'm saying? So brand is definitely first and foremost. Then you work on your market base. Who are you going to direct yourself to? Who? What group are you going to target? Then let's work on your sound. Do you have your sound together? Because a lot of artists think they have a sound mm -hmm. and they really don't. Mm -hmm. You know, they get in the studio making music and it's horrible. But that comes from them having people around them mm -hmm. that's just beefing them up, hyping them up, saying, hey, yeah, that sounds hot. That's fire right there. Boom, boom, boom. I'll bump that. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. That's not gonna, that's not gonna sell. You know, you need somebody to tell you the truth about your music. And if helping you develop your sound and enhancing it and getting you to a better plateau, that'd be the case. If you continue to listen to people around you, you're just going to spin your wheels. Okay. So as a manager, this isn't an idea that people just, oh, yeah, I just want to manage artists. Do you feel like a manager, you got to have all your ducks in a row before you can lead a pack? Oh, yes. Okay. I did. Look, I when I was able to, like currently right now, I'm managing an artist. Mm-hmm. I watched Stephanie manage artists mm -hmm. and like I seen the headaches. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know the truth of the headache until I got my own artist, you know, and it's frustrating, but I love it though. Mm -hmm. I love it though. So it's definitely not something you definitely one have to have thick skin two have to know what you're talking about um, to get into that manager's field. And every artist doesn't require management. That's where a lot of artists, you know, a lot of artists will contact us and say, hey, I need a manager. I need a manager. But have you been through artist development? Right. Have you built your brand up? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're talking about management, but you don't even have your other stuff together. Right. You know, so let's talk about that first. Okay. Okay. Um. So when it comes down to that, exactly. She has a stack of cue cards too, y'all. That's just crazy. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. Like, so when it comes down to thick skin and knowing what you're talking about, that's actually perfect because some people uh, want a manager just for, you know, help in a third eye. Like, hey, you know, I feel like I'm doing everything okay, but can you assure me on certain things? Now, this goes like in hand in hand with partnership, kind of sort of like, oh, well, my manager doesn't like this and I want to go with he say. Has it ever been a time as a manager you had to kind of take your pride out of things and be like, hmm, you kind of right? Uh, yes and no. Um, yet again, kind of like going back, if those questions are being posed and you kind of want somebody to kind of like 
you know, guide you or lead you. That's not the manager's position. You have consultants for that. Okay. Like Stephanie, she consults the artist on the right moves to make. Okay. You see what I'm saying? In preparation to them building their brand or them getting management. Mm -hmm. You know, the consulting comes, the learning process, mm -hmm. like all that comes. And that's one of the good things about it. Like we're actually about to start a um, music academy. Oh, wow. Just so we can teach artists, hey, look, step by step, this is how it works. This is what's going on. This is why. This is what you do. Get your paperwork in order. You get your brand. You get this, 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 and this. We're giving the artist the game. Okay, so what's the name of the music academy? Limelight Music Academy. Okay, that's okay. Um, so with that being said, you know, paperwork, branding, and et cetera, do you feel like um, these artists is out here, you know, oh, everybody's rapping, whatever, whatever. Do you see diversity? Do you see the same thing being talked about, rapped about, sung about? Like, what would make an artist stand out in this type of age? Where do everybody... something different. Okay. Don't don't follow the lead. I don't want to hear another King Vaughn. I don't want to hear another yeah. Pop Smoke. Like, yeah. do something different. Create your own lane. Be different. Because different is what's going to get you recognized. You know, be different with your music. Be different with your message. Um, a lot of times you have a lot of artists that think that, you know, the guns and the money and the stuff in the videos is cool and it's going to get them more recognition. It's really not. Okay. Like, we're looking over those things. Like, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. We're looking over those things. Because that's not, we can't put that before... You know, we can't put that on the table before individuals is talking about investing their money. Your liability. So when we speak of different, can we put in that category? In that category, excuse me, Uzi, Young Thug, Triple X. Like those are very different people. Do you feel like yeah. all of them are the same? Or are they no, they're not. They okay. have they have a different message. They have a different style. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Create your own. Be your own person. Be your own artist. And that's where the branding comes from. That's mm -hmm. where we get to the nitty gritty of who you are as an artist and how do we make that uniquely stand out. Now, Young Thug came out with like skirts and you know, stuff like that. Can we say that was a part of his branding as a manager? Like, or did you see where they were going with it? Oh yeah, we're gonna let these people clown you talk or whatever so your name could get this big and then we're gonna just start dropping hits and hits and everybody's gonna forget about him wearing skirts. Yeah, I mean, that was a power move. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is chess, not checkers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You got to think five moves ahead. Okay. You know, so what's going to have you stand out, not this month, but what's going to have you stand out five months from now or six months from now? You know, what's going to be that ultimate thing? You know what I'm saying? What's your niche? Like, he made a power move with that. But who's really thinking about it? He's selling millions of records. Yeah. Okay. So do you feel like, how do a manager coach an artist through that? Like, look, I know you don't want to. And I'm pretty sure y'all feel like, man, I don't want to wear that. Like, uh. how do you coach an artist into doing something that they're not comfortable with just so they could receive the same outcome that they're working hard? Now, with? granted, and see, that's where the branding comes in at. Mm -hmm. Because when you when we take an artist through the branding factor, we actually sit down with them and talk to them and say, hey, look, what is your brand? It's like we have a checklist. What does your brand consist of? Who are you as an artist? Mm -hmm. Tell me your story. You know what I'm saying? How do you relate to the people? How do you relate to this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, t let that be you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then once we get to the root of that, then we can say, okay, boom. How do we make this, you know, how, how can we present this to the people? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If you have a um, particular item or a particular color that you wear, like, how do we intensify that? To where when people see it, you know, and it becomes repetition, you know. Mm -hmm. So once people like if you wear red all the time, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a red towel, like I keep hand towels with me. Mm -hmm. I wear hats all the time. So if you don't see me with that, it's going to kind of make you want to like, mm, why T ain't got the hat on? Or why he ain't got his hand towel with him? Because that's my signature. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? People remember me by certain little things. Um, so that's you just have to be able to stand out. So in order to coach your artists into what will benefit them, as um, far as their market is concerned, mm -hmm. you have to have that conversation with the artist. You have to find out where they are. Y'all come to a common means. Okay, this is the direction we're gonna go. Okay. Um, have you ever touched on a music video yet? I have directed one music video. Okay. How was that? 
to me, it was great because it was my first time directing one. So it was definitely great. Okay. Uh, did the artists let you take direction? Were they more attentive during that music video? Okay, you didn't like this. You want me to do this? Yeah, they let me do the full treatment from okay. beginning to end. Step by step, they let me do the whole video. Okay. You know, um, and that was definitely one of my... You know, it was definitely some trial and error, some things I picked up, mm -hmm. you know, especially from the team that I was working with in the production side of it. But yeah, it was a great experience. Now, well, are you in charge of the production side of it? Like getting everybody together? No, I was just directing it. Um, she had her own videographer and everything come in. And, you know, we had met a couple of weeks before, went over the treatment for it and everything ran smooth. The day of the shoot, we got together, we went step by step. They gave their opinion on some stuff that I really didn't know about. Mm -hmm. I gave my opinion and it worked perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, when it comes down to management, what, what type of tools do you need to have under your belt before you manage an artist? Huh. You need to go through branding classes. You need to go through marketing classes on top of marketing classes. You need to know some about business law. You need to take business classes. Um, I'm taking courses as we speak, you know what I'm saying? Consistently, you know, uh, my business partner, Stephanie, she's constantly sending me classes. Hey, look, you need to take this right here. I go register, take the class, boom, get it done. So it's a, it's a consistent um, effort in the learning. So it's a number of things that you definitely have to do to get to the management side of it. And even if you just want to do branding, mm -hmm. it's, you have to take certain classes because nobody's going to trust their career with you if you don't have any accolades to back you up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I've taken branding classes um, and marketing classes and things like that. So when I tell people, hey, look, this is what I do, you know, I have the classes to back me up and I have a nice little, you know, background checklist that can back me up as well. Okay. So when artists come to you and, you know, do their first initial consultation, you're able to slap this down, slap this down, and they're probably like, hmm, okay, you know what he's talking about. Like, yeah, and then the proof is in the pudding too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's still also bases on what the artist needs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, we talk about that. We figure that out. Now, I'm never going to sit there. If I can't do something, I just can't do it. And I'm going to let you know, hey, look, I can't really, I don't know much about that. However, our team is so big, I can definitely refer you to somebody within our team that can handle what it is that you need. Okay. Shout out before we close out. Yeah. Um, Definitely want to give a shout out to the Limelight Squad. So let me try to run through this because I know we ain't at the Grammys and nothing like that. So I'm trying to run through it real quick. <laughs> um, Backpack Michi, King Gems, Deja Monet, 380 Vaughn, Wise, Keita Negus, Big Rucks, Carson Keys, Fila, King Nero. Am I forgetting somebody? I think that might be it right now. If I forgot you, trust me, there's no ill intent. Um, you're in the heart. You know where we stand. Big ups to everybody. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. So, you guys, here we have it. We got a backdrop in the background of how it feels to manage artists, what you will need, and as well, what consistency you need to keep up with this image of management. Shout out to Terrence Brown from Slide It In, Key to the Streets. And I want y'all to lock in, like, comment, and subscribe, y'all.